Welcome to the final lab in our error detection and correction series. In this lab, we'll set up a program for matrix multiplication and then we'll use it to generate Hemming codes. So far, in our error detection and correction series, we've seen how to detect errors by transmitting extra information. We saw this in the Parity and CRC labs, and we also saw, saw how to correct errors by transmitting extra information in the repetition and voting lab. The problem with repetition as an error correction scheme is the high overhead cost. We saw a 200% overhead with a repetition rate of 3. What we need is an error correction scheme with a much lower overhead. And that's what we're going to learn about today. As a hint to the possibility of an error correction scheme with lower overhead, consider the possibility of the following things. Being able to use matrix algebra to compute parity calculation on different sets of bits. So instead of the parity applying to the entire message, we can apply parity to some of the bits and not others. We can also look at different errors that are generated when we apply the parity calculation to these different bits. And by doing so, we might be able to determine which bits are in error. And since if we use binary information, bits can either be 1 or 0, if we find out that a bit is an error, that if it's a 0, then the only other thing it can be is a 1. So hopefully, these sorts of things, these, these considerations, can help us to come up with this scheme hopefully with less than a 200% overhead or more. To come up with a low cost error correction algorithm, let's take a look at a simple problem and how we can have parity bits for different bits in a particular message. Suppose that we have a message with three data bits. Call them A, B, and C. And now suppose that we use two bar parity bits that are can either be even or odd. P1 and P2 are these parity bits. So if you look in the image below, we have A, B, C, P1, and P2. P1 is a measure of the parity of bits A and B, but does not include C. P2 is a parity measure on bits B and C. So when we transmit our message, we transmit A, our message, A, B, and C, as well as the parity bits P1 and P2. Let's take a look at how we can use these, this information. Okay, to recap, P1 measures the parity of bits A and B. P2 measures the parity of bits B and C. So, let's take a look at what happens if there's an error in any of the bits A, B, or C. So if A is an error, let's say it was supposed to be a 1 but it became a 0. What happens then in that case is that the P1 that is received on the receiving side will be different than the, the parity that's computed by the receiver based on the values of A, B, and C. So if A is an error, then P1 will be different than the computed value. What about, what, let's look at B. If B is an error, if it's a 0 when it should be a 1, then both P1 and P2 will have values, parity, that are different than those that are computed by the receiver. So the P1 and P2 values that are received from the transmitter will be different than what is computed. And that'll tell us that B is an error. If C is an error, then the received value for P2 will differ from the computed value. So as you can see, with just two extra bits, we can not only detect, but we can correct a single bit error. Because 
If a is an error and it's a zero, then it must have been a one. The concept of using multiple parity bits to check the parity of different bits in a message was extended by Richard Hamming. He was a mathematician and computer science pioneer who happened to work in 1945 on the atomic bomb. His contribution to coding schemes and information coding schemes was the introduction of generalized standard terminology for coding that showed the total bits compared to the information bits. In our first lab, we saw uh, we saw that we had eight bits transmitted with seven bits of information. In our repetition lab, we had three bits transmitted for every one bit of information. In the last example, where we saw A, B, C, P1, and P2, we have five bits transmitted for every three bits of information. Using the standard terminology developed by Hamming, we could easily compute the information rate of a particular coding scheme. The information rate is the number of information bits divided by the total number of bits, which for parity is 7 8, for repetition it's 1 3rd. Hamming developed several algorithms that use multiple parity bits to encode a block of data. We're going to study general Hamming, the general Hamming algorithm, where parity bits are computed from the data bits, and a data bit participates in at least two parity calculations. The most well known of these coding schemes is called Hamming code. It's a 7-4 code that uses three parity bits for every four bits of data. Now, four bits is half a byte, right? It's a nibble, okay? So, Hamming code can be applied for every half byte. The code corrects both single bit errors, but it can also detect two bit errors at a data rate of four over seven, which is much better than repetition which was one-third. Encoding and decoding works by multiplication of the data with Hamming matrices. There is an encoding and a decoding component, which we'll see on the next few slides. In 7-4 Hamming codes, we have an encoding matrix, as shown, and a decoding matrix. The encoding matrix is denoted with a G, and the decoding matrix is denoted by H. Note that they both only contain binary, one or zero values, because these are bit level operations. In order to encode data, for example, let's say we want to send the bits 1, 0, 1, 1. We encode these bits in the following way. We multiply G, which is the Hamming encode matrix, by P, which is the vector form of those bits. So we take the bits and we place them in a column vector. And then we multiply them, row by column, in a bitwise operation. Basically, we multiply the way we would matrices, but when we get to the, the, the total for that row, we take the modulus of the result by 2. For example, when we take the very first row, okay, first, second, third, and fourth row, you notice that that is the identity matrix. So the resultant, okay, uh, is going to be P for those first four rows. When we look at the last three rows in R, which is the resultant of this multiplication, we can see how they're computed. Let's look at row 5, 6, and 7 in R. How does this work? Look at the fifth row, okay? You see the parity row? 
I sh it's highlighted in red. Well, let's do that fifth row multiplied by the vector. So, zero, okay, first in that fifth column, first row, multiplied by one, first row in, in, in uh, P, okay, is zero. One by zero is zero. One by one is one. One by one is one. So that means two. Two mod two is one remainder zero, right? Or two divided by two is one remainder zero. Mod takes the remainder. So that first, uh, that fifth uh, row in R is a zero. And that's how these calculations are carried out. You see, that fifth row checks the parity of bits two, three, and four in P. And by looking at those, we see that it has an even parity because it adds to 2. The resultant R okay, of this multi multiplication of G times P is the new vector that is sent to the other side. So we send R to the receiver. When the receiver receives R, it multiplies bitwise again R times HD, which is the Hemming decode matrix. HD is a constant, right? It's a constant matrix. And when, when it's multiplied by P, if the result is 0, is the 0 matrix, this is, the resultant is called the syndrome. But if it's a zero vector, then no single or double bit error has occurred. If, however, the syndrome is non-zero, then there has been a bit error, and the bit that is an error can be identified based on the pattern of the syndrome S. In the example below, you can see that the syndrome S matches the second column in HD. Because it matches the second column, this means that the second value or the second bit in R is in error. Now, one other point to make is that because we're dealing with bit information, so ones or zero, when we identify that that second bit is an error, we know that if it's not a one, then it must be a zero. Therefore, we can correct the error. Before you begin this lab, please review the following C concepts. Lists of pointers, you can take a look at the previous lab as well for more information. The pointer to a pointer was also shown in a previous lab and matrix multiplication which we will demonstrate in the first part of this lab. In the first part of this lab we're going to learn how to do matrix multiplication in C. For this part of the lab please build matrix.cpp which contains the function multiply a times x. So a is an n by m matrix but it is uh, represented as uh, an array, as a, as a one-dimensional array in C. Okay, n is uh, the number of rows and m is the number of columns x is the vector which is multiplied by matrix A and y is the resulting m by 1 vector. A main to test the function that you're going to write in this part of the lab has been provided for you in E. Conestoga as main lab 6. In part B of the lab we're going to use the function developed and tested in part A multiply AX and we're going to replace our main line okay with the Hemming matrices to include the Hemming encode and decode matrices and we're going to demonstrate the encoding 
and decoding of the message from the previous example. Okay, the 1011 message. So we're going to uh, show that the results that were in slide 11 and 12 for the encode and decode operations produce the same results as what we saw in those two slides. Also, we're going to put an error in the received message and show that the error in the previous example on slide 13 is both detected and corrected. Let's get started. Okay, so to begin, let's open up Visual Studio. Okay, we're going to create a new project and I'm going to make a console application again. I'm going to call it Lab 6 and place it on the desktop. Then what we're going to do is we're going to download main Lab 6 from Econostoga. So this is the testing main. Okay, so we actually don't need this guy right here. Let's remove delete it and we're going to go into lab 6 okay and we're going to copy lab 6 which we downloaded from there okay so one sec I have to open up this guy okay so here's our solution okay and here is our main I'm going to grab that which you're going to download from econostoga okay and then we're going to take this guy add an existing item and main lab 6 okay so we're going to copy that from or download that from econostoga okay so the next thing we want to do oops did i lower it next thing we want to do is uh, i'll leave that, that updating for later uh, we can see that uh, matrix.h is not included so we need to we need to get matrix.h uh, well we have to to uh, write it. So add new item. Okay, this is a header. Call it matrix.h if you like. .h it's already there. And then add that. And then we need matrix.cpp or .c. So new item. Here we'll use matrix.c. Okay, so we have we have the two here. So this one again, I'm going to remove all windows. Okay, so let's start off with our our header. Oops. Okay, space and then star. That's how you do this. If you want it as a block. Okay, so let's do that. Okay, and here we're going to say this is matrix dot h. This is basically this is going to be our interface for matrix multiplication. So this is the function that we're gonna produce. Uh, okay, and then you can put your, your your author right, and I'll say Michael Gallin and Jack Cole, and then we can put. Uh, whatever other information you want, but that that's no problem. So this is matrix.h, and this one copy, and go to matrix.cpp. We're going to change this to implementation. Okay. Okay, and so in here, what we're going to do is we're going to go to matrix.h. We're going to uh, put the function prototype function prototype or definition uh, sorry declaration okay and so here void and then we say multiply ax so we have a float pointer to a float so that's a okay so this is an array effectively we have to uh, then we have int we have the n which is one dimension int m the other dimension, float. I mean, you could put, uh, I know that th some people like this notation. It doesn't matter, but I like this notation because it's telling me that this is a pointer to a float. That's what x is. 
Okay, so you can use whatever notation you prefer. Float and y is a pointer, and this is a uh, declaration. And then Control S to save. It's underlined because we don't have the definition. The function definition doesn't exist yet. So what I'm going to do is go like this. Go Control C. Go to matrix.cpp. Put this here. Now this is function definition. Okay. And now instead of a semicolon, we have the curly braces. Okay. So we are ready. Uh, Matrix.h is basically that's all we need. We're, we're good there as long as we include, right? So we're going to go in here and say include matrix.h. As soon as we do that, we don't need matrix.h anymore. Okay, so we're, we're ready to go. I also want to show what's in main, uh, the main, how it's going to be used. Okay. Uh, but all we really need, I mean, once we have the the input output for the function, we are we're ready to go. All we need to do is understand how everything works. Okay. So next step is what we should do is we should show. Okay. We should first get clear how we're, how multiply ax is intended to work. Okay. So sometimes when uh, you know what above the function, and I haven't shown you guys this yet, but above the function. Okay, it's customary. Put a space, then another star. Then now you could just put star, right? It's customary to put what a function does or how it works uh, above the function. Okay, and again, you can you can close this if you don't need it, right? But here is how it works. So so here we're gonna say multiply, right? A x. Okay, and basically what we're doing is we're going to show how this function uh, works okay so how, how is it going to you know you give an example of matrix multiplication you work through how it how matrix multiplication uh, is computed just to make sure that everyone's clear and you're clear of how this is going to work because a in this example the matrix is an array okay so we need to keep track of the row and columns separately okay so this guy, what does he do? He computes, right, the product, right, y equals ax, okay, where a is an n by m matrix, and x is an m by 1 vector. Okay, and we're going to have y. Y is the resultant, right? It, you can see that already. Okay, so uh, I, I could say y is the output, right? Uh, which which will be an n by one vector, right? It's the same number of uh, columns. Okay. All right. Okay, what we should do is just put like some sort of an example so that it's very clear. Okay, so let's say we have A, B, C, D. Okay, we're going to do a four, a four by four times a one um, or four by one to get a one by four. Or sorry, uh, a four by four. Okay. Uh, uh, multiplied by a uh, 4 by 1 right uh, to get uh, another 4 by uh, an, another 4 by 1 okay okay so let's go here so a b c d okay this is going to be u equals this is just the first row okay it's a u plus b v plus c w plus dz okay that may not make sense yet but because I haven't shown the other the other uh, actually we'll do a four by three how's that yeah let's do a four by three okay so let's let's keep going so let's go e f g h right because I what I want is I want u v w and z okay yeah so I want 
a four rows, one column. Okay, and so this one is going to give the next column, right? Oh, sorry, the next row of the result. It's going to be e times u, right? Uh, plus f times v plus g times w plus h times z. Okay, so we're gonna we want uh, yeah, let's do four by one. That's that's probably the best way to do it. Okay, uh, let's go here. So the next, and this is going to be three rows by four columns. That's probably the easiest way. Yeah, let's do that. So it's I, J, K, L. I should probably make it, yeah, whatever. That's good. Okay, and then this one is going to be a, this is going to be W. So here we have I times U, right? I, oops, I by U plus j times v plus k times w plus l times z something like that. and then we have the last row in this vector x w z u v w z let's say okay all right and then that is going to be our resultant right and the number of res uh, rows in in y Right is equivalent to the number of rows in in um, in the in uh, in a right. So it's n by m. N is the number of rows, and m is the number of columns. Okay. All right. So that is good. Yeah, it matches and it's correct. Okay. So this is what our uh, function has to do. Okay. Uh, now the other point here is uh, the to make is we're not going to use array notation, right? We want to use okay uh, for for a and x. Okay, but we're going to use. Or y, okay? Because we're gonna have uh, we're gonna have a for loop, okay? We're gonna use y in our in our for loop, okay? So what do we have? We need a couple things. Uh, so uh, we have this uh, written in here. This is everything we need here. Okay, so we can start. So we need a uh, number of rows and number of columns, okay? So we have n rows and m columns, but we also, okay, we need to keep track of what row we are on, what column we are on. So let's say int, and then what row we are on, and what column are we on. Because as we go through the, the matrix, we have to keep track of what row and column that we're, we're on. These are the, these are kind of like counters, right? So row and column counters, okay? This is going to keep track of, of where we are. And then what we need to do is we need to go through uh, we need to go through A, right? We need to go through it one by one. So we're going to start on the first row. So we're going to say four. Okay. Uh, row equals zero. That's the first row. Uh, while row is less than n. Uh, no, uh, what are we going to say? We want, we want it to be n. Yeah. Maybe I should change this to make it make more sense. We should say n rows and make this m calls. Okay, just to be more descriptive. And let's save that. I'm going to do this as well over here. n rows and m calls. Okay. This is this is going to make a little more sense when we see it. Okay, so uh, now what we can do is we can say uh, row is less than n rows. Okay. Okay, and then we're going to go up. We're going to increment the rows every time. Row plus plus. Okay. So when we're on row zero, 
Uh, this is we're looking at all of the numbers that are in row zero, right? And then this would be row one. This is row two. Okay, that's actually why I, I drew this to help uh, make this make sense. Okay, so now what are we going to do? What is what is y? Y is this guy. This is y, right? This is a. This whole thing. Oh, oops. This is a, and x is this column vector. So y, y at row, whatever row we're on, equals, it's a sum, right? It's some some sum that we are, are going to, we're going to make a sum of some sort. So the first thing we need to do is we need to initialize that to zero for that row. Okay, so this is, this, this is you see this right here, this, this is the sum, but we have to start it at zero. Okay, what I could do is I could well, uh, we we haven't we don't we can't be guaranteed at if they're going to calc this this uh, memory that's supplied here. Okay, this this so I have to set it to zero explicitly. Okay, that's why I'm not 100% sure what uh, what what the value of y at zero is. Okay, when they passed it to me, so I have to initially set it. So let me see. Uh, say initialize row summation to zero. Okay. Then what am I going to do? Now I'm going to actually calculate that sum uh, by looking at all of the columns in that row and multiplying by the column vector x. So what do I need to do? I need to set. Now I need to go through. Okay. For now, I got to go through call uh, equals zero. Okay, let me just put it. Yeah, so I like to put a space in between here for okay. For call equals zero, okay. Call has to be less than m calls, okay, of the matrix, and then call plus plus. And now we're gonna go through. Okay, all of the line items, all, all through the line. So it would be A times U plus B times V plus C times W plus D times Z. So how do I do that? Well, what I have to do is to say is okay. What am I? What am I want? What do I want the sum? I want Y at row. Okay, so I'm computing that. I I, I want to know what is let's say this first row. Okay, so Y at row is equal to Okay, it's a sum. So the easiest way to do it is to say, because I'm going to go one column at a time. So I'm going to say y row equals y row plus whatever. So I just say plus equal. Okay, just makes things a little bit easier. Okay, now what I have to do is I have to find out which of these. So if I want a times u, right? So it equals a at, now, I'm at row. So this is my row. My row is zero, right? Right now. So row, right? A at row, right? So I'm going to start it off like this, right? Plus call, right? Times x at call. Okay? Whatever x is at that call. I know I said you don't have to. Don't use array notation, but you know what? Okay, whatever. Doesn't matter. Let's keep things nice and simple for us. Okay, we could use uh, star x at the uh, and then increment column, but let's just leave it like this for now. Okay, so so that's what that's what it is. But does this work? Let's go first and see. Uh, how do I? I know what row I'm on. A at row. So if I'm at uh, row zero, right? Uh, so that's this one. So that because A is actually it's not a matrix. It, it is a uh, an array. In the way that this function is supposed to be written, it's an array. So so this is zero. So this is row plus column. So column is zero, right? So then if I go to B, it's it's row plus now column one. So that puts me at index one. If I go to C, it's the same thing. I'm still at row zero, column increments. Go to D, column increments. But when I want to go to E, I can 
I can go to the next row. If I say row, oh, that doesn't work. I need to I need to multiply times m calls to do this, right? Because look, um, so if I'm on if I want to go to uh, what, what I need to do is I need to say, okay, how many columns do I have? I have four columns, right? So if I want to go to five, I need to say, now I'm on row, this is row one, right? Let's say E, okay? If I'm at row one, then I, I have to say times four, right? M columns would be four, right? Plus column, which is, is zero in this case. So that would be the fourth item. So here's zero, one, two, three. This is the fourth item in the array. So it's row times m calls gets a plus column, right, is the number. So let's say f, right? f is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, so I'm on this, the, the row number 1. So this would be 1 times 4, right? Okay, gets me to 4 plus column is now 1 right gets me to 5 so 0 1 2 3 4 5 correct f is correct so this formula should get me to uh, this correct matrix multiplication should be correct now the thing we can do all right what I need to do here is return what's this returning this returns uh, it says re we're going to return a void so we don't return anything. This just return to the main line because we're passing y by reference. Okay. So here we passed y by reference. So uh, we're just writing to y. Okay. And all of the initialization and everything, setting up the the, uh, the memory for y is done in main. Okay. Let's go to main and see what happens here. So we have, uh, let's say here. Okay, what do we have here? Main, it has R, C, so row, column, N is 3 and M is 4 in this case. So this is going to be the, the number of rows, number of columns. Okay, so here we're actually, the way that uh, main here has created our matrix, it uses a multi-dimensional matrix. Okay, so here we have A is 3 and 4. Okay, and so here is a, a known, so we did the matrix calculation by hand here, of this matrix, okay, it's a, it's a, a three rows by four columns, okay, and it actually, it's equivalent to, okay, having a one-dimensional array, okay, this is, is exactly equivalent Okay, the nested braces. If you look in memory, where the where the, the this guy starts, okay, is one. Uh, if this is a float, one float, or uh, so. Flo if, let's say a float is four bytes, just for example, then it would be four bytes after this guy in memory, and it would be adjacent. Okay, so in memory, that's this is exactly what th this guy is equivalent to. That it's equivalent to a one-dimensional uh, array. Okay, and here we have x, this is our input vector, and y, you can see that it has not been initialized. Okay, so this is going to test our, uh, our function. Okay, so we're going to test multiply ax. Okay, we're casting a to uh, a one-dimensional uh, uh, one dimensional array of, of floats. Okay, so because this function requires a one-dimensional array, so we've cast it from this multi-dimensional uh, 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 array to a single dimensional array and, and again like I said because memory is already organized in that way it's not gonna change anything n is already set to 3 m is 4 x1 and y1 are passed by uh, by reference okay you see uh, when you pass the name of a matrix you're passing by reference this is a pointer to the first element in that array Okay, this is another pointer to the first element in this array, or this, yeah, this, okay. So, what are we going to do? This just prints out the results in a way that looks nice, okay? I just set this to 
to the the spacing was set correctly okay and this part right here m if m is greater than n what i did here was because uh, it's 3 by 4 if you go to this example here uh, matrix the cpp this last row would not be printed okay so that's what this this does it prints the last row in that in that uh, vector okay in vector x so if you go if you go back here this will print if there's more rows to be printed okay so let's see how this works and if the logic is correct if the logic is correct then the array that's produced okay the the y the values for y uh, will be correct so let's let's go and see if this works so we'll press play and then we can compare we can do this by hand if you like uh, but we can compare to see what the results are to test our our results so here is y this is uh, x uh, this is y this is a and this is x okay uh, so y is 8 3 negative 15 now if you did it by hand and you did the computation all by hand you'd see that this is absolutely uh, correct okay so that's good so what we're going to do uh, next is we're going to so we have verified part a okay we verified that our matrix multiplication and it's not not that difficult to do uh, that our matrix multiplication uh, algorithm it, it works uh, and it works correctly okay and the main trick is uh, you know because this is a single dimensional array we know the column uh, the number of columns you basically have to multiply row by the number of columns and because row starts at zero it works uh, very nicely and then you add the column uh, to, to go uh, to, to the particular column uh, in this representation okay so uh, th this is the key uh, right here is just to multiply row by the size of each column uh, and then add the particular column that you're in and this makes it equivalent to a single dimensional array okay that that was the main uh, trick here okay and understanding uh, you know how matrix multiplication is going to work when it when this is a single dimensional array okay no problem so that's that's the first part of uh, of of the lab okay now we got to move on to the second part in the lab okay so just to keep everything nice and simple and, and clean, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start a new project, okay, and import uh, matrix.h and matrix.cpp because we're going to create a new main, okay. So let's do that. Uh, so let's let's close this. So file. Let's just save all and then and then exit, okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to create lab six part b, just to keep keep everything nice and, and simple so you have the two projects okay create new project okay we're going to make a console go to next lab 6 and then just say part B okay and then it's going to be on the desktop same as before and then what we're going to do is just to copy those uh, well-known okay let me just get rid of this for now so remove and delete okay and what we're going to do is we're going to copy uh, these guys here so we're going to go matrix and matrix.cpp say copy and put them into go up go to part b and paste it in here and now we're ready to we're off to the races because uh, so now i'm going to go here go to add existing item add the header and then go here okay uh, existing item add uh, matrix.cpp and then right here we need to add a new item and it's just going to be main okay and main cpp and press uh, press add and we're ready to go so this is going to be uh, it's going to be mainline, uh, or we could say client. So let's just say main.cpp. We could have called it. Uh, okay, so this is the mainline, or we could call it client. Let's say client. Okay, 
uh, for Hamming code uh, Hamming codes we're gonna say a test maybe right test okay so there we go now uh, what we're gonna do actually let me do that same thing we can put you know okay and here we put authors okay and whatever you like you can put your date or whatever you like okay uh, control actually just go save all so save all control shift s works too okay all right next step we're gonna do is we need to go and uh, let's open this up let's put this on full screen okay let's let's see what we're gonna do here so we have this main now the one thing so in our matrix here so multiply ax uh, the values that we're representing we're using floats now we don't really need to use floats uh, to do this actually even just just cars will be will be fine but uh, because it's gonna be ones and zeros right so what I'm gonna do instead let me just and also the resultants are not going to be floats either okay so or, or the, the the matrices the resultant vec the resultant uh, vectors the input vectors um, they're gonna be ones and zeros so let's just okay let's do this let's make okay control C let's make another function we'll just call it multiply HX this is the Hamming Hamming guy okay so let's do that first so let's take this and instead okay instead of it being a float okay we're gonna make a an integer I mean we could use cars if we really want uh, rows columns this guy right here is also integer because it's gonna be one or zero uh, integer okay and control s to save everything looks good now we have to define it we're gonna define it in exactly the same way okay so let's go here control C let's go to here and okay we're going to go here I'm going to make it actually I'm gonna copy the whole function from here and then we'll let's go here uh, copy basically everything include the opening brace Control C, and there we go. So let's see. Does everything work the same? Row, column. Okay, that's fine. Those are integers. Rows and columns work just the same as up here. Everything is is exactly the same. I just wanted to change these to integers. Okay, that's fine. So now we have uh, this function. We we use the same logic and everything. Everything's the same. So we don't have to do any testing there. So Control S to save, and we are ready to uh, to go. One thing we might want to do, uh, we might want to the resultant. Okay, so in main, the main that we had before. Let me go here uh, in Lab Six. This had a. Uh, it had. A, okay, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to import this guy, but I'm just going to call this something else, and I'm going to change the main to something. I'm just going to borrow the code from here. Actually, what I could do is, okay, let's open with code. How's that? Okay. All right, so let's go here, and what I want, really what I want is I want to be able to show the results. This guy is the result of the of, of the multiplication so I need this I need to keep this uh, with me okay uh, actually what I could do beca because look uh, we're gonna have to show the results at some point and I don't have anything in main to do that I'd rather make a function uh, to do that so uh, let's close this later okay Let, let's we're gonna make a function that does this okay so let's actually just do that so let's close this let's go here and let's go here okay so we need uh, we need this function so I'm gonna I'm gonna have this function and I'm gonna call it uh, let's go here matrix dot H this guy's not gonna return anything either 
and it's going to say show multiplication we're going to call it okay int and rows int m calls int pointer to h okay this is going to be our uh, it's a it's like a so this is our hemming encode and decode matrix okay and then we need in star x and then in star y okay and then we're going to take this and we're going to define it control c go here and we're going to define it here using the same logic that we have from main okay all right so let's let's go there okay let's see so look just like multiply ax and hs we need a row and column uh, counter so int row call okay and these are the row and column counters we need we need that for sure uh, row and call counter okay uh, we have that in this guy right here where is main line so we have the row and column that's our uh, R and N here row column R and C those are the column row and column counter but I have to put them inside the function okay so we have that uh, here what it's doing it's it's formatting um, as a as a float okay we, we don't really need that so we're gonna we need to format as a uh, as a as a uh, an integer okay so instead of percent F we need percent uh, percent D okay so let, let's go through so basically what we need to do is we need a uh, nested four just like we have in multiply AX and multiply HX so we have four so we're gonna do the exact same thing right so f uh, as we see up there row uh, equals zero right row right is less than n rows and then uh, row plus plus okay all right. Uh, oh, wait a minute. No, we want to increase. It doesn't really matter. Okay, increment and then. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. Good. Okay. So here, uh, we see up here what we want. This this is the next thing we want. We want to print the uh, the first uh, first row with the equal sign right so let's see we have this here I can I can copy this right oh but I'm using row okay let, let's just copy it and paste it up here just before the counter uh, no wait a minute we want it in the first yeah in the first for loop okay so here okay now it's saying okay I don't know what these are so I need to uh, I need to re to change it uh, okay, the printf, I forgot to include standard I.O. Right? So, include .h for the printf. Okay, control S, and now printf is fine. Now, this guy right here is uh, got to be percent %d. Because we're, look, we're dealing with decimals here. Uh, this is a character. Okay, we're going to put a, our first. Okay, now this is what's going to be written. Okay, so it's this is the first number, this is this, the character, uh, this is opening bracket, and then what do we need? We need y at okay, because we're using y, we're not using y one. This is y at row, okay. So y at row, and then here r is row. If row equals zero, if that's true, then what do we want? We want uh, we put an equal sign that's what the character is here if not we put a space right because there's only one equal sign in in our um, in, in the matrix right and that's the first uh, equal sign okay all right okay so all right so print if it's the first line we're gonna print the equal sign otherwise for the rest of the lines so four now here we say C we had we had call equals zero. 
Okay. Call less than m. M is m rows. Call less than m. Uh, no, m calls. Right. Okay. And then call plus plus. Okay. And then here, what we're going to do is we're going to print again, not percent uh, f, but we can we can do that. So control C. We're going to print here. It's percent d. Okay, so put percent d. Okay. Uh, put a space here. And then uh, a, a is h. So H and then it's uh, right we could use this notation if we really wanted to but I, I'm gonna go back to the other notation so row okay uh, times M calls plus C is call okay so we go like that and then what we need to do is the next this part right here uh, so instead of putting it I can put it right inside the the for loop I don't have to do it after I could put it inside here if uh, let's say okay actually what we're what we're gonna do is inside this row what we can say is we can say uh, so if okay row is less than m calls okay if if we go through this whole uh, if we go through all the columns right but if row is less than the number of columns that means that there's more to to print right what we do in that case is we print we're only going to print that uh, that row in X right so what we're gonna do is we're gonna say print F okay and then we're gonna say okay we gotta close what came after and then we go here percent D okay that that's here basically we, we could use this notation but it might not may not work so nice okay so percent D go to the next line and then we're gonna print X at that row okay okay and then that's that's that line else or else we're gonna print the closing column right the, cl the closing bracket there so go here you'll see what this print F and then we're gonna print the, the closing bracket and then backslash n okay Control S to save. All right. Now what we could do is we could we could modify main to test this function. But basically, what we're doing here, uh, if if the row that we're on in this loop, okay, is less than the number of columns, right? Then we have more. Uh, there are going to be more rows to to print out right in the in in y right so uh, if that's the case then close y right and then what we're gonna do is we're going or close the the bracket then we're going to put X right X goes this is the value that X at row is going to be placed here okay so we're just writing the rest of the rows of X and this is a little bit simpler than uh, uh, than the way we saw before than, than this way it just keeps things nice and simple you could use this if you want to but that's not a not a problem okay so let's keep that and we don't need this anymore okay uh, so basically we're gonna print all of the uh, all of the the rows out and then if there's any more uh, rows in X if X is bigger than uh, if, if X is bigger than like there, there are more rows in X than there are in A then we're going to print those rows out as well okay so let, let's see if, if it doesn't if it gives us an issue with printing we can go back to what's in what's in the other main okay let's go to 
so we have show malt here, okay? And so now what we need to do is we need to actually go and uh, we need to do all the hemming stuff, okay? So here we need to uh, include, okay? Okay, we need to include, let's see, we need to include, okay, we need matrix dot h, okay, so that's needed. We, we need some IO, so we're going to need that for sure, so include, uh, we need standard IO dot h, okay, we're going to need some printfs, right, in, in different different places. Uh, probably standard library, we're going to use some things from the standard library, so let's just include that. Dot H. Now, the other thing, do we need to do, let's think, um, no, I think, I think that should be okay. If we need anything else, we'll, we'll add them. Okay. So the next thing we need to do is, is, is create our testing mainline, right? for hamming encode decode okay so this is the functionality that we want okay so int main okay uh, we want do we need we're not really taking in any any arguments here uh, so we don't really need to supply anything okay uh, well okay you know what let's just be argc okay all right so what do we need we need the hamming matrices okay now i've already pre-typed these so um, i'm going to just copy the matrices okay copy them over. I've, I've already pre-typed. These are constants. So we have uh, the encode matrix. Okay, looks like this. So you may want to stop the video uh, and then copy this exactly. The decode matrix looks like this. Okay, and we need, uh, what else do we need? We need to, uh, so our multiply function needs to know this, this 7 and this 4, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say int and then n rows encoded okay are are seven okay m calls in in the encode matrix is four okay because that's what we have then we have three and seven so n rows in the decode matrix okay is three and then m calls in the decode matrix is seven. Now we need this because our, our matrix multiplication function needs to know the dimensions of the matrix matrices, right? So this is like A, right? A this is the this is like the A it, A and or H actually we saw that we did this right here, right? This is H. Okay, we need that. We need number of rows, number of columns. We're gonna supply X and then we're gonna have Y is, is what, what the sender sends and then it's what the what the receiver receives and then uses the decode matrix to to uh, compute the syndrome okay so we're gonna we're gonna do that uh, so what do we need we need the message right so let's go int x okay it's a four bit right because that's what this does it does four bits at a time and we're gonna use the exact same example okay as the as as, as we saw in the slide so this is the message set okay and then we have the uh, the result here and okay so y we're gonna use y because that's what we okay so y has is seven this is the code word right this is the what we're gonna send it's actually R but uh, we'll just use that just to keep keep things simple this is R right this is the uh, resulting code word right uh, this is the p. This is r is is p with the parity bits. P with parity bits included or added at the end, right? Added. 
seven, it's seven, right? It's four. These four plus the parity bits is going to be here. I call it y just to keep keep things uh, sim simple because this guy times the encode matrix is going to be what we send, okay? And then uh, we have so this is this is a uh, r I believe, okay? We could use r if we want, but and then we have and the syndrome that gets computed is uh, is going to be three. I could I could just say this is R. How's that? Okay, this is R. It's P with the parity bits. This is the syndrome, right? Error syndrome. Uh, it's all zeros if if no error occurs, right? All right. So we want to do the encode. Then we want to do the decode, right? So let's say uh, so. We're going to supply R, okay? And we don't know, R is not zeroed out yet, so whatever we do, actually our, our function already takes care of that. So so we're going to do our encode. So hamming encode, okay? And so what we're going to do is we're going to say multiply H by X, okay? And then here we have to int star, right? H encode okay so we're passing the oh I forgot it's not capitalized so we're passing H encode okay as a uh, an array uh, so we have n rows encoded we have m calls in the encode matrix and we have uh, we have X and we have R R is what we're sending off uh, Okay, so now we go, and this is calling the function. And there's no errors, so that's great. So control S to save. And here we can show uh, show results. Right, and that's just, now we just go, let's say print F, and just say encoded, oops, encoded um, matrix, Right, say R equals Y times sorry uh, H times X, right? Or this is the Hamming encoded uh, code word, right? Um, code word. Okay, this is the this is P with uh, with the parity bits added. Okay, uh, and then we need to uh, I would say is go to the next line before we close okay and then close that up okay so that that seems uh, good okay I believe we use G um, in in the slides we use G but this is the encode matrix H E sometimes it's, it's also used instead of G uh, so this is the we could use GX if you want okay G times X, which is which is the same thing as H encode. Okay, so that's that's what we're doing here, and so uh, we could print F. Okay, and we could just just go put another line. This is what's coming. Okay, and then we're gonna say show mult, and then N rows encoded. It needs to know how many rows there are, how many columns there are. Uh, did I? Let me go. Uh, let's see. There's. It's not seeing show malt. Let me see if it's. Did I define it right? We have show malt. Oh, probably I didn't put. Is it control C? Is it here? Yeah. Oh, it's a void and it's show malt. Let me see here. Oh, eh. Always forget that. Okay. All right. So uh, rows encoded. Okay. M calls in the encode in the encoding matrix we need to show the in star uh, this is the encode matrix which has to be passed we pass X and we pass R okay and that's it that's gonna show so let's go control s and let's see if we have any errors when we run this and see if it shows us the encode matrix let's see what happens 
and how it looks. We need to see that too. Okay, uh, there is some issues with how it's printing, but that's okay because I probably have some syntax uh, issues. So let's go to show malt and take a look and see if there's any issues there. But we are, it looks promising. Okay, let's go to uh, here and take a look at show malt and see what uh, what we have. Okay, um, so we have, okay, row column, we have this. Okay, we're going to the next row. Percent, the first one is fine. Maybe there's something in, okay, this one looks fine. This one looks fine, okay. Let's go to the next the next rows here. So, so for the column is zero. Okay, that looks fine. All right, we have percent D, H row, times M calls plus. Call. Okay, that's fine. If row is less than column, then print it. Okay. Right, we're going to have percent. So why is it printing? Hmm. Oh, <laughs> that's the problem right here. There's the problem. Okay, that would make sense. Yeah, because you, you, you want to print this guy over here. So it was my quotes, position of my quotes. That was the issue. Okay, let's try it again. All right, we're good. Okay, but we have an issue with here. There is a difference. I forgot the mod 2. Okay, remember there's a mod 2. So in my H, in H, I need to put mod 2. Because this is, uh, so I have to go into matrix.cpp. Okay, in HX, this one right here, okay, at the end, Okay, uh, for that r at the end of that row, what I need to do is say y at row e equals okay. Uh, it's mod equal, right? Uh, would be mod. No, well here, let's just write it out. Y at row. Oops. Y at row mod two. Okay, so mod equals two would work, right? And I could say mod equals two is what we're doing. Control S. Okay. Uh, oops. Mod equals two. Okay. Control S. So now that row. Let's run it again. Oh, I got to run from. Okay. All right, so let's see. This is 1011. One, one. If you remember from the slides, 010. Zero, zero. Correct. Everything works exactly as we uh, had intended. Okay. So now we encoded. This is what this confirms what we saw in the slides. So now what we need to do is we need to do the opposite. We need to take, we got to give R. Okay. Uh, so this is show results uh, of. Encoding. Okay, this is what's what is sent to receiver, right? And the receiver is going to receive R. Okay, so what we need to do is Hemming decode at the receiver, right? So this is this is from transmitter, and this is uh, at receiver. Okay, so this is what we're going to do at the receiver uh, to see if there's an error. So uh, we're going to go multiply hx again the same way. Okay. And then we have, okay, we're going to pass, we have to pass the h decode, right? h decode, oops, capital D, h decode. Okay. And then we need to pass the number of rows in the decode matrix. We need M 
calls in the decode matrix y and uh, we're gonna oh not y we're passing I change it to R so R and then S okay S is the syndrome and that's it we're writing to this guy this is the, this this is y actually and this is the old X right X is what we multiply H decode by right so we received the receiver receives uh, receives R, multiplies it by this decode matrix, and that gives you the error syndrome. Okay, so that's what we're going to do in order to do this. So now, uh, all we're going to do is we're going to show results. Right, show results of decoding. Right, uh, what the receiver computes. And then it can match up whatever, depending on the the column that matches, then the receiver can can uh, can know which bit is an error. Okay, so let's do that. So now we're gonna say, uh, so we'll, say, we'll we'll use this right here. Okay, but I have to change these these values, but no problem. We can we can do that. So this is the decoded. We're gonna say the decoded syndrome vector well we'll just say syndrome okay and this is s equals h d times its r okay that's that's basically what's happening so now we have uh, n rows uh, decode m calls decode and now we need h decode Okay, and we're passing here like we did before. We're passing. Uh, we need to have. Uh, we need R, which is what we pass here, and S is what we put here, right? Because this this takes the place of uh, of what we received, and this is what's computed, like we did up here. Same thing up here. Uh, wait a second. Yes, exactly, exactly the same. It should match exactly. See these two matched with here. Sorry, this one matched with this one. Just to make sure everything matches, this one should match with this one. Now we're using decode. Okay, so that's it. That should show the results. And Control S to save. Let's print and see if we get any errors. So the decoded matrix is this. No error. Uh, is there all zeros so there's no errors okay good so we're almost we're almost done here now we're going to show the result of an error so actually what I should do is um, under here decoded syndrome I should put it on just put another line just for to make it look nice and now uh, so show the the show effect of an error Okay, in um, in R, right? In, in what was received, uh, bit error uh, at receiver, right? The receiver got a bit. There's a bit error, like we saw in the example, right? So here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna say we're gonna change. Okay, so uh, this is what was sent by the by the receiver, right? We're going to change this bit from a 0 to a 1, like it was in the example. So we're going to say y at 1 now equals 1. Okay, so this introduce an error in uh, this. It's the second bit. Okay, so we're going to do that. Uh, why? What's wrong here? Is it giving me. Oh, not y. Well, I change it to R. This is this is R, okay. This is what 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 the transmitter sent, uh, but the receiver is going to get one one of the bits, uh, right? A second bit received by receiver, right? The receiver is getting this as as a different bit than what the sender sent. Okay, so this is what was sent. Uh, so what we're going to do, and that now we're going to do the same. Uh, computation. So what I can do, really, at the end of the day, is do a printf, right? Uh, so I could say printf, and then I could go uh, new line, new line, and then say effect of an error 
on the results, right? Uh, of the syndrome of the syndrome. Okay, and then I could go, I don't know, new line, and then all I really have to do, I don't have to do anything else, but, uh, but copy these, right? I can do this all one more time. So control copy, just do everything again. I know I could have probably done this in an entire function, uh, but anyway, we could just keep it like that. Okay, uh, what happened? I forgot to do that, right? And then what I should do? Take this. Control copy, control paste. I might want to put some more. Okay. Okay, so th this is after a bit error, right? Of a single bit error, okay? Um, on the results of the syndrome. And we're going to basically uh, basically see that it is that second that second column, like we saw in the in the PowerPoint slide, there, uh, that second column, it means it is going to match the syndrome. That means that the second bit is the one that's in error. I could say I could say second bit, right? Okay. All right, the second bit of the message. How's that? Okay, we, we're gonna putting too many words here, but that's okay. All right, Control S to save, and let's. Let's play the play this and see what happens if everything matches. So we have this was everything we did at the beginning. So no no bit error, okay. Here we introduce a a bit error of the on the second bit in the message. So instead of one zero one one, we have one 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 one, and then we we're passing our parity bits. And now we notice that the syndrome is one zero one, which matches the second column, okay, in uh, in the in the decode matrix, which means that the second bit was the one that had uh, the error. Okay, and that's it for this lab. I didn't want to make it too long. I just wanted to to uh, to show you how this uh, could be used to to do uh, basically error detection and correction, and you could use this in uh, in your project if you like as well. If you're if you're in the project during this semester. All right, thanks, and uh, I hope you enjoyed this video and you learned a little bit, uh, a little bit more about C and uh, a little bit more on uh, channel channel coding for error detection and correction.